Hey everyone and welcome back for another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. This is the beginning of a brand new series looking at how to make quest systems. In this episode we're going to give you an overview of the quest system itself and then in the next episode we'll begin making it from scratch. So how does this quest system work? Well currently you can see a few things, a few features, okay? So I've designed the quest system to follow RPGs. So looking at RPGs as a template, looking at MMOs and uh, things like Skyrim, we can see here I get the influence from WoW, for example. Uh, NPCs can be given quests. In fact, anything in the world can be given quests. So if you want a signpost to give a quest or a post on the wall to give you a quest, you can totally do that. And interacting with them will give you a window to pop up. And in the top right hand corner, you can see the quest objective tracker. And moment, this is the very first quest, and it's only got one objective, but this works for multiple objectives. And the objective you can see is currently incomplete, and it basically says follow the path into the elven woods. So, this is what we call a location objective. The location objectives are complete when the player reaches a certain location. And in this case, it is to advance further into the level, really. So, if I walk through the level, You'll notice a few things. You'll notice first of all the titles of the location turns up. And also you can see the objective is now saying completed. And basically you can keep going uh, complete all the objectives until the quest is complete. And then you can return it back to the NPC. There are multiple objective types um, which we'll go through in a second. And I'll show you how quests are actually handled, handled by the system. And hopefully you like the idea of what this system is going to be doing and are intrigued to see how to do it so here i will go through how this system works so there's a few there's quite a lot of moving parts to this whole entire system so we have uh, not just all the user interface stuff um which I've, i think i removed because i was testing some stuff out but the quest ui stuff like the quest window and the quest log and the objective stuff all that stuff um will be coming Two, that's its own thing to worry about. Um, oh no, here I put it. Yeah, so you can't west, uh, can't west, can't quest widget, HUD, location widget, and all that stuff happens there. Um, then we've got things like system files. So we have objective types. So for example, we have, I just maximize this, four types. So we have a location. Uh, so this one uh, objective is to reach a certain location kill object to kill a certain uh, enemy and uh, be it one enemy or multiple enemies you can determine that it's up to you so, and collection so collect a certain item this could be found on an enemy or in the world somewhere totally up to you again and finally interact so pull a lever open a door step on a button those sort of things okay so you interact with a certain actor in the world and the, I, I spent some time thinking about what kind of quest existed in sort of RPGs. They pretty much fall into mostly all of these categories, okay? So let me just walk you through how this works. And the quest status, obviously, is the quest status, like complete, incomplete, and so forth. So as an overview, quests are separate actors. So you have a parent quest, and on the parent quest, we have uh, various things. We have um, event dispatching going on for each uh, of the different uh, objective types. So reach a certain location, kill an enemy, or interact with something, or collect an item. And you can see how it all links up there. And these all trigger different updates. So for example, an update, a location objective, this goes through the process of updating a certain lo uh, location objective. But... The way it's designed is it'll work with any location uh, for as many as you have. On top of all those sort of things, you also have multiple variables. So the variables you have are the quest markers that you have, the quest status, the title, the description, and whether or not it's complete. And finally, an objectives. So the objectives are an array, a list of all the objectives the quest could have. This is the parent, so therefore it has no objectives. It's just a copy uh, to refer to when you're making other quests so let's show you an actual quest so if i open up this quest 001 and I can, you can see it's got no code on it it's all handled by the parent so i just turn it to determine whether or not the quest status is active or available rather the title of it the quest description 
and with notes complete. And you can see here the objective, so the objective text, follow the path into the elven woods, location, type of objective, and whether or not it's already complete. So you can also add objectives to it dynamically if you wish, okay, it's totally possible to do. With that done, I will then, if I remove this one from this, from this guy here, you can see how this works. So if I want to give this character a quest, I'll drag a quest out into the world and it spawns it into the world outliner. I can then click and drag it on top of the NPC and that now belongs to him. Uh, to make things a bit more organized, I did make a little button here which moves the quest above his head so it makes it nice and easy to follow. So imagine if you wanted a, a child quest, so basically a, the second quest that won't show up until this one's done. Well, you will just drag another quest out and you make that a uh, child of the first quest. So this NPC won't give you quest 2 unless quest 1 is complete. Pretty cool. So that's the whole reason why I want, I've been taking so long with this, sorry for keeping you waiting, is that I've been trying out different ways to make it as easy as possible for non-programmers to design quests. Okay, so the whole idea of making uh, these complex blueprints is so that designers who have no blueprint experience can easily add and edit quests uh, as they freely want to do. So how do you actually set objectives then? So on this quest 001, you can see the objective text and type and you can see I can set the target item or location and the number I need. So with location you don't actually need a number but you click on this little eyedropper and I click on the location there and it's now got the location actor of this. So this has now got refers to that. So if this was an enemy for example kill I just click on here and choose an enemy NPC in the world. So I've got one over here I can click on the enemy and it will change down here. I can choose how many I want there too. I uh, need to tweak that a little bit. But you can choose how many you want to be killed before the quest is complete. Uh, the objective is complete. So hopefully you like the look of this system and I'm excited to be begin learning how to do it. Um, I'm excited to finally get it out and into the wild. So uh, yeah. Let's quit cracking and I'll see you in the first episode. If you want to see the next episode right this minute, you can head over to patreon.com, support me there, and you can access not just the next episode, but all other videos that are exclusive to Patreon subscribers too. So it's early access to videos and it will help me out massively to uh, fund more videos and more time to dedicate to these videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.